Paul's letter to the Philippians uh, is one of my favorite books in the Bible. I, I love this little letter, uh, just packed with all kinds of truth, with wonderful meaning, and that is beneficial and helpful to us in our own walk with the Lord. Our Bible reading is in uh, Philippians chapter 1 through 4, the entire book today. But boy, it's just a wonderful, wonderful little letter. Uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11 are the verses that caught my attention. I entitled this Paul's Prayer because this is what he prays, and I think it's an excellent prayer that we all could consider to use in our own prayer life. Here's what those verses say. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in all knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus, to the glory and praise of God. Four specific things that Paul prays for in these verses uh, for these believers, that their love may abound more and more, and specifically, that it would abound in knowledge and discernment. Secondly, that they would approve of things that are excellent. Third, that they would be sincere and without offense. And then fourthly, that they would be filled with the fruits of righteousness, with the goal of bringing glory to God. Well, these are these are mighty, mighty requests. And I and I have used them myself uh, in my own prayer life and praying for other people. And it's it's a, an awesome thing that you can pray. I mean, these are these are wonderful things uh, that your love would abound, approve things that are excellent, be sincere and without offense and filled with all the fruits of righteousness. Uh, we know we're praying in the will of God, dear ones, when we pray things that are right there in Scripture for us to pray. And uh, I would encourage you, if you are praying, interceding for someone, that you use that model prayer that Paul has, used, has given us here to pray for them. Uh, these requests are, are mighty requests. And uh, uh, there are a couple of words in there that I think are really uh, important and, and uh, require some definition. Love abounding in all uh, knowledge and discernment. It just means that it's a love that isn't ignorant of what is going on around it, uh, is able to discern the times and the seasons and, and loving despite all that is going on. Approving things that are excellent is uh, something that Paul is going to expand on later on in the chapters, in chapter 4, uh, that, uh, as to what that might include. And then uh, sincere, uh, well, that's a great word. It means without hypocrisy or literally no cracks in it. There's no... Uh, wax fill in the pot, but it's a, it's a completely formed without crack pot. And so uh, that's our love to be without any, any hypocrisy at all. Uh, so the fruit of the Spirit is, is really what uh, we should all strive for, to have that uh, existent in our lives. And so that it's visible and seen, but not for our glory, but for the glory of God. So all that to say, we're praying for other people that God's glory would be revealed in and through their lives. What a great thing to pray for them. Uh, we could pray for absolutely sp uh, specific things, but here is something that is a general thing that can result in specific answers in the lives of others that we're praying for. So I encourage you to use that in your prayer life. It's a wonderful thing. And again, as I already have mentioned, boy, when we use Scripture to pray, we know we're praying in the will of God. We know uh, that God is hearing us and that he answers our prayers. So just encourage you with that word this morning. May the Lord richly bless you as you grow in your own walk and as specifically in your prayer life as, as God directs you and leads you by his spirit. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today, I pray.